and uh, my responsibilities include uh, Windows Server backup on Windows Server, the automated system recovery feature, also known as ASR, in both the client and the server versions and also the complete PC backup technology, the engine which is behind the technology on the uh, client missions. I really enjoy building products that help meet the needs of uh, uh, millions of people out there. That is my passion. And I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing with you what we have built in Windows Server Backup and to listen to any questions and feedback that you may have. So uh, let's actually get started. So uh, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to for uh, all of you who have given us feedback on what we had in the in 2008. Uh, so a big thanks, and we are looking forward to your feedback. Uh, uh, we are looking forward to your feedback uh, going forward too. Okay. So in agenda, uh, first we will be talking about what Windows Server Backup is. What does the product do? What is it aimed for? How does it meet the needs of a small business user, a medium-sized organization, a large-sized organization to an enterprise? So for the spectrum of the customer base that Windows Server is aimed at, how does Windows Server Backup fit in and how does it meet their needs? That will be part one. And while we are doing part one, we will also try to map how the end user needs have actually influenced the creation of features inside the product, and I'll be showing you a demo also of the features uh, spread throughout this meeting. Secondly, we'll be going a bit on the technical side and talking about some of the changes that have actually happened in the R2 version of this particular product. And uh, finally, uh, we can actually have question and answer. Uh, feel free to shoot your questions through the uh, through live meeting. And I'll actually uh, pause uh, uh, multiple times, and I'll try to take whatever questions I can uh, in the middle. OK. So we'll actually get started with the scenarios as to what, what were the customer needs and what does the product have. So uh, to talk about Windows Server Backup, uh, Windows Server Backup is a, is a new uh, data production feature available with the server uh, for free, starting from Windows Server 2008, and it's also available in Windows Server 2008 R2. For people who are familiar with the backup solution that shipped with Windows 2003 and earlier, it was a product known as NT Backup. Windows Server Backup is replacing NT Backup, so you no longer have NT Backup uh, in the operating system. And Windows Server Backup, gives you a variety of protection ranging from protecting your system state to protecting your application data, protecting the file folder data used by applications and by users, and uh, ranging all the way up to disaster protection. One thing to note though for veterans and NT backup that uh, Windows Server Backup is not a feature by feature replacement of NT backup. The features of Windows Server Backup have been driven from user research and customer feedback and feedback from IT pros, MVPs, and uh, uh, everyone in the Microsoft ecosystem. And uh, one of the first things that you'll actually notice when using Windows Server Backup is that it no longer supports backup to tape. Uh, we'll actually go, uh, while we actually dig into the scenarios, you'll be able to figure out why Windows Server Backup itself does not support backup to tape and how that design trade-off is actually giving value for customers. Uh, the uh, driver support for tape drives, however, continues to be available in the, pro in the operating system. So if you are developing your own applications and which actually uses the tape drive, you can still go ahead and use it, only that the backup product which was shipping in the box is now no longer giving that functionality of backup to tape. Okay. So uh, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, you to the small business needs that we have actually uh, learned from the uh, customers. So from small business, we are actually talking about you know small office or a home office kind of a user, uh, small organization user, a small business server user, 
uh, basically people who are having less than 15 uh, uh, computers at their office typically is what we actually call as the small business segment. So we actually did a lot of detailed studies with the small business segment and what we actually came to find out was the first and foremost thing that people uh, asked us to have a reality check is that the small business environment does not have dedicated or trained IT professionals. So most often it is a person who is actually running his business who is somewhat comfortable in using Windows itself and can get around uh, places but is not a trained IT professional. So you can't expect him to troubleshoot many things and you know handle very technical details. And that's the typical profile of the users you'll actually find in small business. Secondly, uh, most often uh, backups are actually not available. And we actually, when we actually dug in deeper, we figured out there, there were multiple reasons why backups were not available. In many cases, backups themselves were not being taken. So the uh, customer has not invested in any backup solution. He does not have any backups. And he actually figures out too late that he actually, at the time of wanting to do a recovery, that he has no data that is actually backed up. The second thing that we have seen is the backups do exist, but they are not sufficient to meet the recovery, recovery needs. I'll give you a couple of examples here. Um, we have had customers who actually were backing up data on their C drive, uh, some folder, C colon slash foobar folder. And one of the employees in the organization, however, actually saved a business critical data in some other folder on C drive. Or sometimes he saves it on the D drive. And the backup, however, is actually backing up a different folder. And when the time actually came for a recovery, they figured out that the backup is present but does not have the data that they actually wanted. In, in some other cases, we have figured out that the backup was happening, but it was too infrequent. Like the backup was happening once in every two weeks, sometimes once a month, uh, sometimes even once in many months. So the person was thinking that he actually had a backup, but the backup was not updated frequently. That is also another thing that we have seen. And lastly, backups have been taken, but at the time of recovery, they find that the backups are actually not present. For example, we have seen many customers, uh, when asked whether they take a backup, they answered, yes, I have a backup. And you know, you can actually guess where the backup is sitting. It is actually sitting on the same drive on which the primary data is sitting. So when the hard disk actually failed, not only did the customer lose his business critical data, but he also lost the backups that he actually had. Coming to recovery scenarios, uh, pretty much the recoveries range from uh, people who did a oops delete or they modified a document and they want to get back to an older version versus they did some uh, you know, uh, operations on an, with an application and they want to roll back the application. And going all the way up to a hard disk failure, sometimes it is even theft, fire, flooding, uh, and various uh, site level disasters. So all of this kind of boiled down to two things. Impact is cost and business downtime, and business downtime again translates to cost and loss of productivity. So all of this boiled down to the customer spending cost in either hiring IT professionals or outsourcing to IT professionals and spending a lot of money, and also suffering when it actually came to a disaster scenario. And we actually seen customers who have been waiting for multiple days to multiple weeks to actually get out of a situation where their hard disk has actually failed. So essentially, to actually sum up, if we actually look at all these problems that are there in the small environment, they pretty much need a backup solution that is so very simple to set up and one setup just keeps going, and it actually requires minimal to zero management. So it's not an IT professional, so it needs to be pretty simple, and it needs to always work without asking for intervention. Secondly, the backup product should ensure that the backups are always available for the server. By always, I actually mean that it is backing up all the data that is there on the server, and it is backing up the data frequently. Uh, thirdly, it should enable backups to be kept off-site. 
meaning that to take care of say flood or fire, it will be great if you can actually have you know backups that are there on your uh, uh, business uh, uh, premise, office premise, but at the same time you have the last week's backup actually sitting in your home or in the boot of your car, so that if the entire site were to go down, at least you have uh, the data that was there one week earlier. Finally, they need a solution that will support all the recovery scenarios and will reduce the business downtime. So we looked at the recovery scenarios on top. So essentially, you need to be handle. You, you should be able to handle file deletion, application data getting rolled back, the operating system actually getting rolled back to all the way to disaster recovery. So let's actually now switch gears and look at. So this is the need of the small business guy. Let's actually look at what the large enterprise and the medium sized organization actually have as needs. We have seen actually a, a number of varied deployments and many of the problems that we actually saw in the small organization still applies to the large organization, but the large organizations typically have IT professionals. They have people who are technically savvy, at least to some extent. But they have additional needs. And those additional needs are ability to customize and extend the backup solution. So we have seen environments which are ranging from deployments in demilitarized zone to you know data centers. You might have branch offices. You might have branch offices that are actually poorly connected. You might actually have your infrastructure and application workloads. So pretty much the environment is so varied and is driven by business requirements. So we cannot have a one size fits all kind of a solution where we say I will I know what to do. In fact, the administrators and the IT professionals know better what they actually want to do. So the product needs to be able uh, to give a feature that can be customized and extended to meet the needs of that particular environment. Secondly, uh, it should be able to automate the common backup tasks. The moment you are dealing with a large size organization or a, a enterprise scale, you are actually looking at uh, managing multiple missions. And when you are actually managing multiple missions, your day-to-day -day tasks, which are taking one task or two tasks on a particular mission, now quickly translates to 300 or 600 tasks, for example, if you are managing 300 servers. So the product needs to be able to support some level of automation so that the day-to-day tasks day-to-day -day tasks can be automated. Thirdly, management is actually a overhead. So uh, ma the product should be easy to manage and it will be great if the product actually supports remote management. This will allow you to manage the product sitting on one mission instead of you actually physically logging on or getting a console access to each of your 300 missions. Finally, while the storage that a person who's a, who's a home user or a small office user can actually go ahead and buy an external hard disk or an internal hard disk for say, uh, in the Indian case, it would actually uh, come to say a couple of thousand rupees. The enterprise class hardware that is actually there for storage is pretty pricey. It has got various advantageous features like performance, fault tolerance, etc., which makes the entire thing more costly. So the large organizations are very particular when it comes to how backup utilizes the storage space. So they need to minimize the storage that they are using for backup. Lastly, coming to the recovery scenarios, you still have the deletion of uh, files, uh, rollback of the application data or the system state data, and going all the way up to the server unbootable and disk failure scenarios. So looking at all these needs, Pretty much, it becomes apparent that they need a backup solution that is flexible to allow a usage as per the environment. The product should be flexible, it should be scriptable, and it should be possible to automate the tasks. It also should be easy to manage and should offer remote management capabilities. Finally, it should be efficient and support every recovery scenario that comes up in their environment. So, uh, so this is actually the summary of what we have seen so far. So we have actually looked at the small business people who wanted a pretty much a solution that will take care of itself 
and make sure the right things are getting done. Whereas in the large organization, you wanted a solution that will get the input from the user, is flexible, customizable, manageable, and actually you know, meet the needs that varies from one environment to the other. Okay, so from the summary of needs, I'm now going to go to what solution we have. So far we have looked at the problem that is present and what they are looking for. Let's actually go ahead and look at how Windows Server Backup meets these needs. Okay, so if you are a, a small business server or a small organization, small organization, here is what you get. You pretty much get a solution that is an all-in-one. So whatever you want is available in one solution at one go. So let's look at how the uh, themes and the needs actually translate to features. We pretty much needed a backup solution that will backup, it will ensure that the backups are available, and it is easy. So the feature that we have in Windows Server Backup is the three-step protection feature. In the three-step protection feature, you pretty much say, step one, I want to backup my full server. I don't know where the data, I don't know where the important data sits. There are many people who might put data wherever they want to, so I don't want to take any chances, just back up the entire server. Step one, done. Step two, I want to make sure that the backups are happening regularly. I don't want to end up in a situation where I took a backup but is actually not suitable or is not relevant. So step two, say that you want to back it up every day. Step three, ensure that once you have taken that backup every day, it is available for you at the time of recovery, including scenarios like disk failure and site disasters. So what we need essentially is a backup that will continue to exist even if the primary hard disk on which the data sits actually is uh, failing. So step three, store the backups on a dedicated hard disk. So there we have the three-step protection. Back up the full server, back it up every day, back it up to a dedicated hard disk. Okay, so we have now solved the problems of having a simple to set up and an always available backup. Coming to management, Windows Server Backup comes with a promise of zero intervention. What it essentially means is the product A is very reliable so that once you set up, the backups keep happening. Secondly, in a traditional uh, model, if you are using NT backup or some other uh, backup products, you might come across a situation where you have some space, you are taking backups, but at some time the space is over. So you need to make the decision as to how much space you will actually reclaim, how you will actually reclaim that space, and what versions of the backup you need to delete. All of that is now gone with Windows Server Backup. So what we have is a zero intervention feature where the older backups will automatically delete, uh, sorry, the newer backups will automatically delete the older backups to make space. So once you set it, you can literally forget about it and it'll keep chugging along. And for people who are looking at, hey, for this particular storage, I'm able to see that I'm having two weeks worth of, you know, backups. I actually want to make sure I have three months or, you know, two months worth of backups. So what do I do? The equation is pretty simple. You just increase the storage and you will get more recovery points. And you can do it by plugging in another hard disk which has got a higher uh, capacity. So, so we have now seen how it is easy and complete in terms of what it, uh, what it is backing up. We have seen how it is actually uh, managing itself uh, so that you need not come back to it and uh, intervene. Lastly, Coming to the disaster recovery uh, scenario where there is flood, fire, and theft, what we enable is a new feature for the first time available in the platform, which is the disk rotation concept. So with disk rotation, you can essentially configure Windows Server Backup to back up to multiple disks. Of course, when we say disk rotation, it means that one of the disks is attached to the server where backups are happening, while the previous week's backups they're taken to a different disk and it is not attached to the server. This means the disks that you are going to be using should be external hard disks. 
and external hard disk can be your eSATA, it can be your USB uh, external hard disk, it can be FireWire external hard disk. So those are the classes of device that you can actually use. Very soon we'll actually get into the demo to actually look at how this feature looks. Uh, so you have now set up backup with two disks. So after you actually configure backup with two disks, what you need to do is say that on Monday you configured backup, you added those two disks using our wizard. And Windows Server Backup knows that it can store its backups on any one of those two disks. At this particular point, you can actually plug out, yank out one of the disks and you can actually keep it at your home. Come Friday, five backups have actually gone to the disk one. Friday evening, you bring back your second hard disk. You just unplug the first hard disk. You just yank it out from the USB slot. You slot in the second hard disk and you are done. You need not open your backup application. You need not reconfigure it. You need not say that now backups have to go to the second disk. Windows Server Backup handles it automatically. Once it finds that the previous disk to which it was doing backup is not available, it will now search whether there's another disk that is pre-configured to be used as a backup target. And if it finds one such disk, it will actually start backing up to it. So this offsetting mechanism itself, while it is new for the uh, platform product, it is also great when it actually comes to the small business environment so that you can actually just do a physical operation of attaching and detaching a hard disk at the USB slot and not do anything more. Now, one thing to note here is, when we actually said zero intervention, we said we'll actually delete the older backup to actually make space for the newer backup. Almost most or all, almost all of these features that we have actually seen here is actually not possible with a tape drive. So the focus for Windows Server Backup has completely shifted to using the disk-based backups. Nowadays, disks are almost as cheap as tapes and are also highly reliable. And with the external hard disks, you are also getting an option to actually offset the backups like you would do with a tape drive. So we feel that this design of Windows Server Backup really makes it extremely useful for small business users who are actually not IT professionals and are looking for a one-stop backup solution that does the right thing on its own. So let, at this point, let me actually switch to a quick demo. Okay, so uh, the screen that you are seeing, uh, seeing is a Windows Server 2008 R2 server, and the user interface that you are actually seeing here, the UI, is the Windows Server Backup feature. You can get to Windows Server Backup feature in a couple of ways. You can actually click on Start, and you can actually just type Backup, and you will be given the link for Windows Server Backup. Alternatively, you can actually go to Administrative Tools, and you will be able to see Windows Server Backup there. Or if you are a person who is a fan of Server Manager, you can also get to Windows Server Backup using the Server Manager. So once you launch Server Backup, this is the user interface that will actually greet you. For people who are familiar with MMC user interface, you know that the primary UI is on the left side and the actions are actually there on the right side. So the backup uh, user interface is currently saying that a scheduled backup has not been configured for this computer. So let's assume that we are actually a small business user and try to set up the backup protection. So the first thing that I'll actually do is create a backup schedule. So I'm clicking on backup schedule, which will actually open up the wizard with which I can actually configure a scheduled backup of Windows Server. Okay. So this is the getting started page. It essentially says uh, all that what you need to do is specify what to backup, when and back, when to backup, and where to store the backups. On the left side, you actually see the three steps that I actually talked about. The first is what to backup. The second is specify backup time, which is the when part, and the third part is where you actually store it. So let me press next here. Okay. So here. 
I am actually choosing full server. I am a small business guy. The recommended option is to back up all the data that I have. I choose full server and I actually press next. Once I press next, Windows Server Backup doesn't actually give you a choice, but it is telling you that you need to back up at least once a day. You can be more aggressive to back up multiple times a day. So let me stick with the default which says that back it up at every day night 9 p.m. and press next. Now it is actually asking where to store the backups. The recommended option is to store it on a back on a separate dedicated hard disk so that the hard disk failures are restricted to only the primary data and do not extend to the backup disk. I am leaving it as it is and I am pressing next. So at this point is where you will choose which backup hard disk to actually use to store the backup. Windows Server Backup by default will let you, uh, you know, will push you towards using an external hard disk because that will enable you to actually take the backup off-site. In this particular case, on this server I am using for the demo, I do not actually have an external hard disk attached. It's actually running on a Hyper-V server. So I have only internal hard disk. So let me go here and what I am doing here is I am selecting multiple disks for backups. So this kind of simulates the uh, uh, choice you would be making if you actually want disk rotation. If you do not want disk rotation, you can just choose one of the disks and then press next. So when I press next, the prompt that you are actually seeing essentially says that the entire backup disk would be used for storing the backup, which means all existing data on it would be erased and formatted. The reason we do it is, we want to ensure that the backup data is being separated from the server data. And you can safely offset the backup disk uh, without compromising the data on your server. So here it is. I specified it as full server. I actually specified that the backup needs to happen every day. I gave it a couple of hard disks and I'm actually done. Now when I actually press on finish, it'll actually go ahead and create the backup schedule. Let me at this point actually uh, switch back to the presentation. Okay, uh, let me at this point see whether there's any quick question that I can take. Uh, okay. Uh, at this point, I don't see any questions related to Windows Server Backup. If you have any questions, keep typing it in, and I'll actually get to it uh, while, we, while we are actually doing the presentation. Okay, so let me actually switch gears and then look at the log, morgue, and the enterprise scenarios. So if you are a log or a morgue, we pretty much said you are actually looking for more flexibility in the product. And this is a feedback that we actually got pretty strongly in what we gave in 2008. And we now are very happy to say that we have the ability to back up individual files and folders. Uh, so you can actually select which folders are important for you and back it up. While the small business user did not know what folder was important, the more than the log and other people, uh, and in some cases, the small business guy who is reasonably tech savvy could now choose what to actually back up. This also helps reduce the amount of data that you are backing up so that you can actually only back up the data that is interesting to you. Secondly, you can now do a backup, uh, incremental backup without performance degradation. Uh, we'll actually look, at, we'll talk more about it when we actually get to the technical overview slide. Lastly, uh, while the small business guy wanted to back up to a dedicated hard disk, that was a, a constraint which was pretty hard when, I, when it actually came to the more than the log. So they essentially had fault tolerance built into their own environment. We have seen customers who have invested in high uh, availability SAN. We have people who have invested in, invested in RAID setup, who have clustered, who are running on Hyper-V. You know, there's a bunch of uh, things that a, a large organization can actually do to ensure that the hard disk failures, etc are not so very uh, frequent. So in those cases, they did not want to dedicate a separate physical hard disk. So we now, in 2008 R2, we have made the change to allow scheduled backups to be stored onto a volume or a network share. 
Okay. Uh, coming to manageability, so we actually looked at flexibility. So now that you have control over over what is actually getting backed up and where it is getting backed up, we hope that the large organizations will feel much more comfortable and useful uh, in using Windows Server Backup. Coming to manageability, we have actually made a ton of changes around manageability in Windows Server 2008 R2. To start with, A, is the product scriptable? The answer is yes, and we actually have two ways in which you can do scripting. If you are the person who has been uh, working with command line and batch file uh, scripting, you have a command line tool called as Windows Backup Admin.exe or WB Admin.exe. If you are one of the people who are on uh, reasonably on the higher, you know, the new stuff around script, scripting, especially around the partial support, we now have complete partial support for automating your common tasks. Secondly, uh, the partial support, by the way, is something new that we are actually invested in R2. So whatever you actually see as new in the slide deck, that is something that we have invested in in the R2 release. Secondly, the product is now scriptable. Now, can I actually manage it remotely? The answer is yes. For people familiar with PowerShell remoting, you can actually establish a session or you can actually invoke a command to be run on any of the machines. Using the same mechanism and you can now move back of your servers. Secondly, in the MMC console that we actually saw, I will also show you a demo, that we have an option called as connect to another computer. Using that button, you can actually go ahead and specify that you want to manage the backups of another server from this particular server. One thing to note here is the connect to another computer user interface link is uh, compatible only with the same version of Windows. So if you are using an R2 mission, you can connect to it only from another R2 mission. Similarly, from a Windows 2008 to a Windows 2008, you cannot go cross version. System state backup and recovery has been one of the core scenarios for the Morg logs and the enterprise. And they are looking at, uh, you know, we know that NT backup gave a, a lot of support for system state backup. It had a nice user interface. Unfortunately, we could not make those investments in the 2008 uh, original release. But in the R2 release, we have listened very carefully and uh, you know closely to the feedback we have received here, and we have invested a, uh, you know a lot of effort in making the entire system state backup and recovery feature more usable and more manageable. To call out here, you can now do scheduled system state backup. This is again something new. You can do system state. You can do system state backup directly to a network share. Previously, you had to actually take the backup to a local drive and then you know copy it to a network share. You can. And lastly, you can now include and mix and match system state with any of the other items. In 2008, you pretty much had a system state that you would have one backup task for system state and another backup task for the data on your server. You don't have to have multiple tasks. A single backup task is capable of backing up system states, some files, some folders, and exclusions, and whatnot. So essentially, we have looked at flexibility, and we have actually looked at manageability. For manageability, remote management support, and your core scenario of system state is much more usable and manageable. Okay, so we actually talk about how the storage for a large organization is actually uh, high class, it is more costly, and more storage means most cost. So we have actually made changes in Windows Server Backup, especially around system state protection, to make sure that we are actually making the best utilization of the storage space available. For example, system state backups now leverage VSS for actually versioning the backups. When you actually read the data from your source volumes, we always use VSS, but for system state, when we were storing the backups on the target, we were creating separate folders. To give you an example, uh, let's actually take a Windows Server 2008 uh, machine. 
and say I do a system state backup to one of the drives. You will find that the basic system state backup itself occupies about 7 to 8 uh, giga GBs in size. Now if I were to do a second system state backup, it will again take around 20 to 25 minutes to complete and it will occupy again another 8 gigabytes. So with two backups, you have not spent 25 plus 25, 15 minutes and you have spent a disk space which is 8 plus 8, 16 gigabytes in size. We have actually seen that many customers keep at least one week worth of system state backups because the corruptions and other things sometimes are detected two or three days after they actually were introduced. So they want to have backups at least for one week. So in a typical case where you are having one week worth of backups, we have found that if you are migrating to Windows Server 2008 R2, the space that we will use is almost one-seventh of the space that we would have used earlier. So previously we were using 60 gigabytes, now we will be losing, using close to around you know, 9 or 8 gigabytes. Also, now that you actually have incremental system state backups going, we do uh, backups that are 5 times faster. So your initial system state backup, which took 25 minutes, will continue to be 25 minutes. But on the other hand, your second incremental backup that happens uh, will actually take uh, you know, the time and the uh, time required only to back up the changed files, which is in the order typically of three to four minutes. So we already talked about it. Unlike 2008, we don't create separate folders, but we actually uh, create, uh, use VS a snapshot for the versioning itself. And we now have incremental backup without performance degradation. So this, this last point is interesting to people who were already aware of the technology which was used by Windows Server Backup in 2008, which was a block level technology. So we were actually tracking files at the block level and to track those block level changes, we essentially had to enable the VSS snapshots on the source volume. So that constraint is required for, and, and enabling that snapshot will affect the IO performance, the input output performance of the disk drives on the server. So by default, Windows Server Backup always had the incremental backup option or the faster backup option turned off. With 2008 R2, you now have a file folder backup engine which no longer relies on the shadow copies to actually determine what changes happened. Instead, it uses the USN journal to actually figure out the changes and can do an incremental backup without affecting the performance of the server. So uh, this is just a summary of all, uh, for all the users, what the common recovery scenarios and what feature we have in Windows Server Backup. So for people looking at accidental deletion or corruption of user data and rollback, what they need is backup of the user data and the application data, and what recovery feature we actually give is the file folder recovery, application recovery, and volume recovery. For people who are looking at protecting the operating system, what they can back up with Windows Server Backup is system state backup, and what they can recover is system state recovery. Lastly, for situations where the server is unbootable or you have a hard disk failure or a site disaster, you pretty much need a backup that is a bare metal backup that backs up all the critical data of your system, and you can do a bare metal recovery using Windows Server Backup. Again, uh, we actually uh, touched upon it a bit in the previous slide, that if you have a disaster and if you have your backup stored on another disk, you can actually do a bare metal restore. So what the feature actually promises, and this promise is actually, uh, you know, kind of for all the Windows users out there, is that you can get back as you were last night when the backup ran in just under 30 minutes. Again, the 30 minutes is a typical uh, uh, data that we have seen for servers where there is around 30 gigabytes or uh, something of data. Of course, that number will slightly go up the moment you have backed up more data, which means your recovery needs to recover more data. But the typical thing we have seen is pretty much most of the servers can actually come back within this 30 minutes. Now look at this. We have seen people who have actually, you know, 
taken, uh, what they do is they actually reinstall the operating system, then they actually install their applications on top of it. Hopefully they do not miss some applications. The user data needs to be recovered. The user settings and the application settings need to be recovered. The application data needs to be recovered. And all this kind of translated to multiple hours, if not actually a couple of days of effort. We have now cut down that time for every Windows users to just 30 minutes. And it gets your user settings, your application settings, all user data, application data, assets there at the time of backup. And more uh, uh, good is that you, the fact that you can actually recover to even new hard disk. So you actually can just get a hard disk from your shop, attach it to the server, and use the recovery wizard and perform a recovery. It will automatically create the partition layout for you, and it will actually create the partition structure, put the data back, do the recovery, and reboot your server. Now, uh, we actually said you need not actually install the operating system again, and you have to just perform a recovery. And to do this, essentially, the recovery needs to be launched from somewhere. That recovery platform is actually the Windows recovery environment. So you can read a lot about Windows recovery environment on the net and on TechNet and various other uh, things. I'm not going to go into detail on that. Essentially, with 2008 R2, there is a WinRD partition which is embedded with every OS install. So that when you are actually in the boot up process, typically you can press F8 to get to advanced boot up options. If you press F8, one of the top options you will actually see is the repair your computer option. That is a new in R2. If you are using Windows over 2008, you can actually use a Windows Setup DVD. If you boot using Setup DVD, in the middle of the screen you will see an option called as Install the Windows Operating System. And on the left bottom you will see an option called as Repair Your Computer. If you click on Repair Your Computer, you can actually get into the recovery wizard and do a bare metal restore. So bare metal restore is the industry term that is actually used. And uh, the product, the feature also goes by a couple of other names. It's called as System Image Recovery in R2, and it's called as Complete PC Recovery in Windows Server 2008 and in Vista. So uh, to just summarize, so we actually looked at uh, the large organization. We have flexibility for them in what to backup, where to backup. We have manageability for them through scripting, remote management, and a better system state. We have more efficiency for them when it comes to storing system state backups and incremental backups. And uh, lastly, we looked at how it meets all their recovery scenarios, including a disaster recovery. Looking at summary of changes in R2, uh, this is for people who are familiar with 2008 and who are looking at one shot one slide as to what the changes were. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, flexibility, ability to manage, and efficiency. So uh, before I just go to part two technical overview, I would want to uh, show you a little uh, demo of how uh, we can, uh, for the manageability and the flexibility features that we have added in R2. Okay, so we are in the same user interface, and uh, I'm going to still click on Backup Schedule Wizard, but this time, instead of actually, uh, you know, pretending that I'm a small business user, I'm going to assume that I'm actually an enterprise or a large organization admin, and I want to set up backup. So in the second screen where it said full server, instead I'm going to say, I'm a guy who knows what to backup and where to backup, so I want custom options. I want to choose what to do. I now press next. Here the page is pretty much blank saying that you need to, the administrator needs to tell the product what needs to be backed up. I click on add items here and I actually choose that I want to back up system state and from my particular, from my hard disk I actually want to back up these two directories, dir and dir2. So after I do this, if you are looking at setting some advanced options, you can click on advanced settings. Here you can actually specify what file folders to exclude. And when you are actually excluding, you can actually exclude, uh, you know, based on uh, 
uh, all files and folders, specific file. You can even say exclude all star dot log under C drive. You can say exclude star dot mp3 under the D drive users directory. So you can be pretty flexible in what you actually want to exclude. So now that I've actually said I want to back up some files and system state, pressing next. I am still prompted to actually back up at least once a day, which ensures that there is a backup. And when it comes to where the backup needs to be stored, I now have the option to back up to a volume or a network uh, folder. These two options that you see here are new in R2, and it adds to the flexibility that was asked for by the large organizations. So I can choose a vol I can actually choose a you know volume here. Press next add that particular volume and you know press on finish so if you are a large organization user uh, you know a sad it savvy user you you can specify what files to back up you can actually exclude some of them and you can actually decide where to store them one thing i want to actually show quickly here is in the advanced settings tab you also have a tab called as vss settings this pretty much most of the time you can actually leave it at its default, and the default is a VSS copy backup. So uh, quickly uh, getting into what this uh, means to you is many times in a large environment, people use the inbox backup application to protect the system state and some file data. They would still want to protect other mission critical application data using a third party backup solution. So the VSS copy option ensures that Windows Server Backup can coexist peacefully without affecting any other backup products which is actually out there. And most often you would want to leave this as VSS Copy Backup. And that's the default choice. Okay, so uh, we pretty much saw how you can actually be flexible here. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up a, a partial window. So uh, I'm going to quickly, uh, so the window that you are seeing here is another server, and I actually have a PowerShell window that is actually open. The PowerShell command prompt needs to be launched under administrative privileges. So once I launch it with administrative pri privileges, I can actually go ahead and work with PowerShell. So uh, uh, the first step in actually working with PowerShell is to add the snap-in to actually manage, manage PowerShell. This is familiar for people who have actually worked with PowerShell. So I can actually say, add the PowerShell snap-in called as windows.serverbackup. So this is the snap-in for Windows Server Backup. You, uh, okay, so the error that I'm getting here is that it's already added. So I've already set up the demo here. So I'm actually getting the feedback that it's already added. Let's go ahead and check that the PS snap-in is indeed actually available now. So I do a get PS snap-in command, and you see here at the bottom that it's already listing windows.server backup as having been added. So let me actually at this point quickly go back to the slide deck to tell you about the partial scenarios, and we'll come back to the demo. Okay. <clears throat> first, for people who are familiar with the backup world, the first question that comes to people's mind is, can I take an incremental backup? Can I take a full backup? When do I take an incremental backup? When do I take a full backup? And when, uh, this is in one way a flexibility, also in another way it's a challenge because the small business guys or the large business guys essentially want a backup solution that does the right thing on its own and gives the best of both worlds. And what we have in Windows Server Backup is essentially best of both the worlds. So uh, let's look at why people want to do an incremental backup. So incremental backup makes the backups faster and it also means that you are taking up lesser space. The space is of the higher order uh, priority here. That the space occupied on the target for the second version of the backup is only for the delta or the changes that happen. But when you actually have to do a recovery using an incremental backup, you pretty much need to stitch together. So you need to recover the base, then you need to recover the incremental. Or sometimes 
if you are looking for a file, you need to figure out whether that file is present in the first full backup or in the second incremental or in the third incremental and so forth. So what Windows Server Backup does is, it pretty much gives you a synthetic full backup, which means the space that is occupied on the target is as if it is an incremental backup, but when you want to do a recovery, it actually looks like a full backup. So you no longer need to stitch together, you know, uh, multiple backup sets. So if I were to actually use an example, let's actually take the, uh, an example where you are backing up uh, 10 GB of data and 1 GB of data actually changed. So if you are doing the first time backup, it will be a full backup, it will actually take 10 GB. The second time when you actually do a backup, it will actually occupy only 1 extra GB on the target so that you will have two versions in 11 GB. Now if you actually go to the recovery wizard, however, you will find that every backup looks as if it is a full backup and all the data is actually available for you to do a recovery. And the recovery points are synthetically generated so that it looks as if it is the exact recovery point. To give an example here, assume that you actually had a file in the first full backup, but the file was deleted by the time the incremental backup was taken. So when you actually go to the recovery wizard, you will be given two point in times to which you can go back to. If you choose the recovery point in time, if you choose the date time of the incremental backup, you will find that the file is actually not there. Whereas if you choose the older time, you will find that the file is there. And you can press on recover button once and it will automatically make sure the right file is actually getting recovered. So you need not do a manual step of recovering the base and then recovering the incremental and then recovering the third incremental on top of it. You no longer need to do any of that. Again, this is one great feature which again is possible because we have a disk-based backup solution. Okay. Uh, incremental backups kind of mean that read and transfer only the changed data. It can mean that. It can also mean that the space occupied on the target is only for the changed data. So when we actually uh, do a full backup in Windows Server Backup, even though we call it as a full, it is a synthetic full, so we will read and transfer all the data, but when it comes to the space that is occupied, it will occupy only the space required for the changed data. We already talked about in the previous slide that each backup, while it is incremental from a space perspective, it is full in terms of what can be recovered. Okay, uh, this, is, uh, this slide is predominantly directed at people who are kind of familiar with what we did already in 2008. So in 2008, the backup product shipped with a technology which was a block level backup technology, kind of similar to an imaging technology. So what we were doing is, we were actually backing up data directly from the volume, bypassing the file system. This essentially meant the reads were much faster and we have typically observed that the reads are three times faster. Secondly, when we have to do an incremental backup, I talked about it earlier, to do an incremental backup at a block level, I need to track what blocks are changing. And to track what blocks are changing, I had to use and, you know, have snapshots created, VSS snapshots created on the volumes which I'm actually backing up. So that way I can transfer only the blocks that are changing. This essentially means that uh, I will enable shadow copies to track the changes which can affect the uh, IO on the source volume. But on the other hand, if I actually have a file, which is say uh, 1 uh, GB in size, but I change only 1 MB in it. Now when I actually read using a block level backup, and if I have turned on incremental backup, I will read only that 1 MB that changed within the file. So the changes that we are tracking is at a granularity of even within inside the file. By default, however, to ensure that the server performance is actually not affected, incremental backups are turned off by default. And this is what you get if you back up an entire volume. Whereas if you actually drill down and choose to back up only specific files and folders, we will switch from using a block level, volume level backup technology to use a file level backup technology. 
again when it actually comes to what can be recovered and other things all this technology does not matter whatever you backed up you can actually go ahead and recover so this is to actually give you an insight on how the choice you make in what you back up affects the backup performance and it actually you know uh, affects or does not affect your server performance so when you actually do a file folder backup that you are backing up not the entire c drive but some specific folder inside the c drive we read from the file system which is typically a bit slower when compared to the block level backup secondly at a incremental backup level we will only know that the file changed so we will actually read and transfer the entire file even if only a part of a file has changed but when it comes to the target irrespective of whether it is a block level backup or a file level backup the space that will be occupied will be only for the changes now again to ensure that uh, uh, you know all the blocks on the target are healthy meaning that the backup target is not developing bad sectors or if there is a bad sector we actually directed earlier we always force a full backup to actually happen every 14 days and again when we actually do a full backup it does not mean that another x amount of space would be required on the target it will only be again for the delta but we will ensure that we attempt to write to every block and we'll check the health of every block so full backup every 14 days but space is still only for the changes that happened okay coming to partial support we were trying to get into it uh, the scenarios for powershell itself is to automate the common repetitive tasks and recovery does not fall into a repetitive task that you do at least not something that you would like to automate so the partial support is available for you to perform ad hoc backup set up and manage scheduled backups and to manage backups remotely using partial remoting your recovery scenarios if you want to do any of the recovery you can still use our user interface or you can use the command line tool wbadmin.dac to perform the recovery and we actually saw this before that you do add ps nasm uh, and give the name as windows.server backup to actually enable partial uh, support for windows server backup let's quickly look at what are the high level steps that i'll do with partial we actually saw the three step protection for a small business guy and that team has been extended to partial while keeping the product flexible and manageable so when we are actually working with partial you will create a policy object which essentially says here is what i want to backup basically meaning that this is the backup configuration to that policy you will actually add what data needs to be backed up then you will specify where the backup needs to be stored and after you specify what needs to be backed up and where it needs to be backed up you can decide to run a backup immediately with those settings or you can say save it as a scheduled backup to run for the feature for the future so uh so to recap uh, technology wise uh, backup performance actually depends on the granularity of backups the backups can be full or incremental but the space occupied is only for the incremental but it's always full when it comes to recoverability partial support you actually create a policy add backup items at the target run the backup immediately or you can save it for later uh, let me very quickly uh, run to the uh, demo mission where i was showing you the partial scenarios and i'll show you how to do those three steps using partial okay the first thing i told us we have to create a policy object so what i am doing here is actually saying dollar policy is equal to a new windows backup policy so you will see that uh, wb is the prefix we actually use for windows backup and all the windows backup command let's actually start with the verb followed by wb and then the actual stuff so i have now created a policy let's actually look at how the policy looks i'm just printing the policy here when i print the policy it pretty much says the schedule is empty where i need to store the backup backup target is empty the volumes and files that i need to backup is empty whether i need to backup the bare metal recovery bare metal backup whether i need to backup system state currently it's all set to false and vss backup options by default it is a copy backup 
Now let's actually go ahead and add the data that needs to be backed up. To add the data, I'm going to create a file spec object. File spec is nothing but the file specification. Basically, you have to specify which are the files and folders that you want to include in the backup. So in file spec, I say dollar file spec is equal to new Windows backup file spec and I've already created two directories C colon dir1 and C colon dir2 in my mission. And I'm actually saying that I need to back up dir1 and dir2. Okay, I've created that object. Let's actually look at how that object looks. You'll see that the file path is what I gave. File name is star, conveying that the entire folder needs to be backed up. If recursive is a flag that is set to true, meaning that not only need, you need to back up this folder, but also all the subfolders and other things underneath it. And the last thing that you see is, is it an inclusion spec or an exclusion specification? By default, it is an inclusion specification. You can look at the help to specify how you can exclude, for example, c colon slash star dot mp3. So I've actually now created the data that needs to be backed up, but I've not added it to the policy. So let me go ahead and add that to the policy. I say add the file specs to this policy object, this file specs object. This command add wb file specs essentially adds the file spec to the policy. Let's look at how the policy has now changed. You'll find that rest of the things is still empty, but the file specs to backup now has c colon slash dir1 slash star and dir2 slash star. So now I've specified what to back up. I need to now specify where to back it up to. Okay, uh, I'm just going to my computer here and looking at what are the drives that I actually have. Okay, I have a E drive here. So let me go back to the partial prompt. Here I'm actually going to be saying dollar backup target is a new Windows backup target. And you saw in the demo previously that the targets itself can be of three types, a disk, a volume, and a network path. So I'm here saying that it is a volume path and the path is E colon. So this command new WB backup target has created for me a backup target object. Let's look at the backup target object. The backup target object essentially says the volume is E colon and it gives you the volume grid path that is that will be used internally. So I've created the backup target. Let me now add that backup target to the policy. That's the second step. You created a policy, you said what to backup, now you'll specify where to back it up to. The command that you will use is add Windows backup target to this policy and this is the backup target that you need to add. So it has added it and it has also printed out the policy object and you will actually see that now the backup is actually set to the backup target that you actually specified here. So the backup target is now E colon, inclusion is still C colon dir1 and dir2. At this point, I can either say start a backup immediately using this policy. This is one thing that I can actually go ahead and do. Or I can actually go ahead and say, set this policy as a schedule and then pass the policy object. So you can either say start Windows backup or you can say set Windows backup policy. These are the two things that you can say. Again, we looked at system state and DMR. Those are still reading as false. Let us quickly see how to set those. I can say add Windows backup system state and give dollar policy object. Now if I actually print the policy object, you'll actually see that system state is now reading as true. You can do the same thing with BMR uh, and you can actually say add Windows backup add Windows backup bare metal recovery and then give the dollar policy object. Now if you actually look at the policy object, it will actually have BMR set to true. So this kind of wraps up our uh, demo on uh, partial.
So we have seen how to create a policy, how to specify what to backup using the file spec object, how to specify where to backup using the backup target object, and you can actually save it as a policy or run it immediately. And uh, if you are to uh, save it, if you want to save it for the future, you can actually set the schedule information. You can say set WB schedule, and you can say to this schedule, run the backup every day at night 9 p.m. So this is the default that you saw in the user interface. So when I actually execute this, and I actually look at the policy object, you'll actually see that the schedule is now written to 9 p.m. You can actually ignore the date, the date part that is actually listed here. That will be ignored internally by Windows Server Backup. So what matters is the schedule that you actually see here. So once you add the schedule information, you can actually go ahead and set this policy. And it is actually confirming whether you want to create this policy. And uh, essentially now, that's it. You have actually uh, created a policy that backs up system state, DMR, a couple of files onto the local E drive on this particular mission. So we are um, almost done here. We just have another couple of uh, slides to actually go through. So, uh, so the call to action here is, uh, so we actually, uh, before we actually get to the call to action, so we looked at Windows Server Backup, small business needs, a product that does everything on its own, and we saw how, how Windows Server Backup meets that, especially around getting your server back up in 30 minutes as it were without having any reinstalls and being able to offset your backups using disk rotation and having no management, zero intervention. We then saw how the large and the medium sized organizations wanted to have flexibility, manageability and efficiency and we saw that using file folder backup, being able to control where the backup is being stored and uh, being able to manage things remotely and automate and script stuff using command line tool and partial. Finally, we actually looked at the technical overview as to how you can actually go ahead and use PowerShell to manage Windows Server Backup. And we also looked at how incremental and full backup, the normal terminology that is used in the backup world, incremental and full, how does it apply to Windows Server Backup? Essentially, the summary was Windows Server Backup does a synthetic full each time apart from the first full backup. So it is always storage for incremental, but full when it comes to uh, recoverability. So here, my uh, request to all of you is keep the feedback coming, and especially if possible, uh, please test the scenarios and share your feedback. You can feel free to share any kind of feedback that you have on the product, right from bugs that you actually find to user interface tweaks that you would like to see, to features uh, that you would actually uh, like to build, like us to build in the next versions, to the roadmap that you would like to see for Windows Server Backup. So uh, that's pretty much what I would like to hear from you so that we can improve the product based on your feedback. Uh, for people who are already part of Windows Server 2008 beta testing, you have a dedicated beta news group you can actually use the beta win7 backup underscore recovery news group. For people who are not part of the uh, beta testing, you can actually uh, post your questions and feedback. The R2 version is now public, uh, so you can actually post your questions on TechNet. The forum that you use is Windows Backup, and you will actually have the link with you here. So you can post the questions there. And if you are actually wanting to pass any feedback, that please pardon the interruption. Your conference contains less than three participants at this time. If you would like to continue, press star 1 now, or the conference will be terminated. So, uh, I really want to uh, thank you guys for uh, taking this. There's one appendix slide that we can actually quickly look at. Uh, this is more of an FYI that Windows Server Backup supports backup to internal hard disks. It supports backup to external hard disks. It also supports backup to network shares and DVD and kind of a removable media. 
But with DVD, you can only do a full recovery. You cannot do file folder backup and recovery. And with a network share, you can actually have only a single version out there. So these are some caveats I just want to touch. So uh, thanks for attending this uh, particular webcast. I'm very uh, uh, excited to actually share this with you. Looking forward to some great feedback, uh, both in our forums, news groups, and as mails to Windows Server Backup. And please do test our product and give us feedback. Thank you. This webcast is now uh, concluding. Thanks for your interest. And we'll see, see you again soon in our next webcast. Thank you.